All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I've got a great interview for you today. We're going to be talking uh, to somebody who was able to secure a remote job just before everything that happened in the world, the pandemic. So at that time, it was actually pretty rare to get a remote job. And then she's a few years on now uh, into her career. And so I thought I'd bring her on the channel and she could really share some great insight uh, for people who want to see what it's like a few years down the line. And also people who are in a similar situation to the situation she was in, where she was kind of in a college degree. She wasn't very happy with her situation, uh, didn't really know which degree to get, uh, didn't really know what career path she was going to be pursuing, and was just generally confused uh, about the whole college system, which is extremely common these days. So Claire, thank you so much for coming on the channel. Hi, thanks for having me, Shane. Awesome. So Claire, let's take it back to the beginning. You were kind of in a situation you were telling me about college, but tell me a little bit more. What, what's what what's kind of the background you came from a little bit? What situation were you in before you discovered digital marketing, before you discovered that you could have, you know, this digital remote job or digital career without having to go to college? Yeah. So uh, way back when, um, not really, it, was, it actually wasn't in the grand scheme of things that long ago, but yeah. So I was in college and I was looking for what in the world am I going to do as a career path? I'm in school changing my major five times. I don't know what I'm going to end up sticking with. I started at a community college, um, was planning on transferring, um, working a part-time job, uh, barista <laughs> for a long time. Um, really enjoyed like the working, working part-time. So I definitely valued you know, having my own income. And I really wanted to try and make, I wanted to find a job where I could make good money, but have more of a flexible lifestyle. Like I knew I wanted to look for a remote style job if possible. And so I would go on YouTube and search like remote career paths or remote jobs you can do. So um, really wasn't super loyal to the idea of transferring over from community college to university. But if it happened, that'd be, that'd be great. Just didn't fall. I didn't find anything that really stuck out to me, but I found um, Seth's course, like when looking online and on YouTube and definitely found him searching that way. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So were you aware of digital marketing as a career before you found his course? I had heard of digital marketing. I didn't know anything about the different kinds of digital marketing. Like I had heard the term SEO. I feel like a lot of people throw that around. I didn't know really what the difference between SEO and SEM was or like uh, content marketing versus I, I knew generally, but I didn't know all the different kinds of jobs you could get in that. Got it. Field. And so how long did it take you to decide to jump into Seth's uh, coaching program? And by the way, guys, if you're a little confused about SEO, SEM, Seth's coaching program, digital marketing, that kind of thing, there is a free resource which I'll put down in the description in the pinned comment below. that will tell you exactly what that is, tell you how you can get into digital marketing, whether or not it's a good fit for your personality. And all those questions that you probably have. So definitely check that out. Uh, go ahead, Claire. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so you said how long it was till I figured yeah. you'd go ahead and, and make the make the purchase. Yeah. So it was probably honestly, I made the decision pretty quickly because you know, it it was not any more expensive than a college course at a community college. Um, in fact, I'm sure it was cheaper, especially at the time a few years ago. And I was like, I'm seeing these really great success stories. It looked like his testimonials were um, true, was connecting on people, uh, connecting with people on LinkedIn. Um, just it's, he seemed like it was legit. So I think it was probably like a week after I was just watching his, just binge watching his videos. <laughs> um, I was like, oh, I can, I can try that and see how it goes. So, so you jumped in, you took the leap of faith. How was the coaching program itself? Um, it was really good. I mean, the course, it was more like a broad overview teaching the different areas of digital marketing, like like SEO, like SEM, um, 
And he focuses mainly on those two other rather than social, um, social media marketing or content marketing. Um, so that was really valuable just to get a really good understanding of those concepts and what all goes into running a successful PPC campaign that actually generated, you know, a profit is, was the goal of, um, uh, that's the goal of any campaign really that you're spending money on, but yeah. So, and then I liked that as his, there was a whole module on like having, it gave you advice on how to get your first generate your, your first experience yourself. So, um, I remember reaching out to him through the program, just asking questions and he responded to me pretty quickly. And there's a Facebook community and you could, you know, see other success stories or people would ask questions in on the Facebook page and I would be able to interact and see how other people are starting generating their first experience. Cause that's kind of daunting. Like you have to do that on your own. You're not going to be able to just take the course and get a job. You have to actually apply the things that you learn to generate your own experience. And um, yeah, but I definitely felt like there was a lot of support available. You could talk to him directly and yeah. And then just like, as far as the actual job interview process and resume tips, there was a lot of that kind of thing um, as a whole section in there as well. So that was really valuable too. Awesome. And how long after you took the course were you able to land a job? So I actually had to look, I had to look back at this because this was back in 2020. And I, I was like, how long did it take, take me to do that? Um, so I want to say it was three, two to three months. So it really wasn't a long time um, that it took me. So it took me two to three months to take the course. You can do it in less time, I feel like, but you really want to, I wanted to make sure that I was really fully understanding. Like I do some of the learnings twice to make sure I was understanding what was, what was going on before I went. And, um, so that took a couple months and then I ended up generating my own experience with, um, so my husband's family member, he's like a cousin that's a little bit older. He was actually starting his pest control business which worked out really well that I could just approach him and say, I'll run a campaign for you for free. If you give me a certain, you know, it was a small budget to start, but um, that helped me get my feet wet in terms of that. So I did that for like, maybe that was also pretty quick, like three months. It was during a summer, the summer of 2020. And then during, um, the fall, I started to apply to jobs. So I would say it was about six months in all before I got some interviews going and then I got a job that January. So um, I took his course in the spring of 2020 and then I uh, I landed my first job um, towards the end of the year, that same year and then January. So maybe like eight months in total between okay. the time I started the course and landed the job, but got it. Definitely got wanted it. to make sure I under got the experience and got it. That. All right. So I think a lot of people want to know, uh, whatever you're comfortable sharing, how much was that first job that you landed in terms of salary and, and total yeah. compensation? Yeah, I don't mind. So it, the first one was 46 base and then there was an opportunity to make some bonus so I want to say it was between like 46 and 50 by the time I left um and which for somebody I was 22 uh I didn't have a college degree I thought like that was I had made it like that was that was really that was really a lot of a lot of money to me especially at that time you don't think that you're going to be able to if you drop out of school, like if you choose to leave university, um, is what I, the way I like to say it. Um, and then you land a job, you don't expect to be making that kind of money. Like I thought it wasn't really possible 
really yeah. without a degree your, your parents people tell you that but it, i don't think it's true at all i i'd like to say uh fire your university if you choose to fire university I like uh -huh. <laughs> fire them yeah. okay yeah. <laughs> instead of dropping out because that yeah. implies that you failed or something <laughs> No, yeah. I didn't fail. I got good <laughs> grades actually, but just didn't want to, didn't want to do it. Yeah. Right. Right. Awesome. So, okay. So 40, 46 to 50 around for that, that first job. That's, that's amazing. I mean, that's pretty much what most people make when they graduate from school. Right. Like yeah. with a bachelor's, like that's, that's pretty, smart. that's about what most people make. So, um, then you were able to do that without, having to graduate so that's great for a first job and plus you didn't have to go through the extra years of schooling so opportunity cost and you know and the compounding of you know like if you put your money in the stock market you it probably would have gotten like well in 2020 we you would have gotten a lot actually but uh yeah so <laughs> I wish I was not smart but yeah yeah it, it dropped and then it went up like crazy in 2020 um mm -hmm. so Okay, so that was the first job. And then um, if you want to talk about your second job, because I think you said about uh, six to six months later, eight months later or so, you were able to already land your your second job. Um, and then whatever you're comfortable sharing with that. Yeah, so I was at the agency for about eight months. And then I applied for um, a different job, which I'm actually still at today. So I've been there for almost, it'll be three years in October. And I started on there at 60. And so that was another jump. I was like, oh my, oh my gosh, like this is, this is great. Um, and then over time, it's been a few years. So now I'm at 70. So um, with the promotion, I did get a promotion last year. Um, they did give me another raise. So that was, that was great. Awesome. Um, and then just generally speaking, the first job and the second job, could you quickly kind of go over what your job description was? I know the first job you were in an agency, so you're kind of doing a little bit of everything. And mm -hmm. then what, what about the second job? What did you end up specializing in? Yeah. So the second job is a little bit different of a business model. So it's definitely something to get used to. Um, but I really, I really like it. That's why I've, I've stayed for this long and so it's more of an affiliate style of business. So instead of in an agency where you're working with clients and you're essentially running campaigns for them, and um, it's as simple as somebody clicks on the ad and then um, proceeds to make a sale on the site and you're managing the client spend. But in this case, I work for um, a media company where we partner with brands. So... Um, say, for example, like um, a Forever 21 or something will bid on their keywords. So they'll partner with us and allow us to bid on something like a coupon term. So Forever 21 coupon code. And then we end up driving sale or driving traffic to our own landing page. So we're, um, we're a, basically like a coupon site and so we'll have different offers on the landing page available. And if someone chooses to click through one of the offers, they'll be taken to the brand site. And then if they make a purchase, we get commissioned on the sale that we technically drove for them. So it's definitely more of a, it's a lot less stressful to me managing because we're spending um, the company's money. So my, the company that I work for, I am spending their money versus the client's money which is a little bit less pressure and and stress when you're um yeah when you're dealing with large campaigns especially with a lot of spend um obviously i still have to be careful but yeah it's definitely i feel like my work life balance is a little bit better with this style of campaign management and just the business model but yeah i'm i'm also a digital marketing senior specialist that's my title right now and um it's been really good Got it. So mostly pay per click now, basically. Is, yeah, is yeah. Really I've always, I've always been um, pay per click. Okay, got you, got you. Okay, so um, yeah, that that thing you said about the the agency, I, I hear a lot of a lot of people say that. It's kind of like 
everyone almost cuts their teeth at an agency. That's that's the saying. And then they they learn a lot of skills very quickly at an agency. But it, it can be a little bit stressful, a little bit fast paced because the agency has a ton of pressure to get results. And then you might go in house and then that tends to be a little nicer. And, you know, you're only mm -hmm. having to work with one client, so to speak. Whereas at an agency, you might be working with like five, 10 clients. And yeah, it's just a little nicer. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of people have kind of similar stories, but at least you got to learn a lot, right? That's the. I did. Yeah. I am grateful for that experience um, and learning a lot in that eighth month period. I definitely learned a lot that's carried on. Awesome. This cool. So what about just like, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but what about just job satisfaction and work-life balance compared to jobs that you were doing in the past uh, versus, you know, di your digital marketing job now? Yeah. Um, honestly, right now, and this is something that I value probably more than anything. I mean, pay is obviously important. I have to live, I live in a, a city that's more expensive than other places I could live. So pay is important, but also the work-life balance is like top of mind for me working at an agency. And I don't know if it's like this at every agency, but specifically where I was at, um, you know, you would work more hours than eight. <laughs> you mm -hmm. would, you would not be able to really shut your laptop and have that peace of mind that, Oh, I can just leave this and then work on it the next morning. Um, when 5 PM comes around and, you know, sometimes I'll work a couple hours, but that's not a very regular thing into the evening. So, um, yeah. And they're, they're flexible. Like I can work, I'm hundred percent remote. Um, so I can work both my jobs have been remote that I've had in digital marketing, but yeah, this one, I feel like it's the norm. Like there's not really a culture of it's frowned upon to not stay on after hours like mm. the other one was um so now i feel like i can actually respectively close my laptop at 5 p.m if i don't have anything else to do and leave it at that and that's amazing like i know some people like to job hop around and um that's also something that's totally respectable and but i feel like i'm at a point right now where i'm just so happy like even if i could make a little bit more money somewhere else, I feel like the work-life balance is more worth it for me. Just, I found something that works and I, I don't want to, I don't want to leave. Mm. And the culture I, I feel like is a good, a good fit for me. So. Well, yeah, congrats on that. And for sure, if you wanted to, you could, you could definitely job hop and, and make more money if you, you know, Thank if you, you wanted to, yeah. for sure. Uh, just cause I, I've kind of like interviewed a lot of people and spent a lot of time around students that, that are kind of at the same level. Yeah. But, but yeah, that's I mean, if you found a really good spot that has great work life balance, you know, you like your coworkers, you like your company, like, hey, what you know, manager is nice. That's important too. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so yeah, that I mean, not everyone has that. So it's it's, you know, I could definitely respect uh, wanting to stay there. And that's, and that's a good choice from the company, because obviously, they value treating their employees well. So treat their employees well, the employees will stay. It's pretty simple, right? So um, that's awesome. All right. So what would you say to somebody who is kind of maybe in a similar situation to the situation that you were in? Maybe they're in college right now, or they're, you know, maybe even in community college thinking about transferring to university. They're confused about what they want to do. Uh, they chose a major just because they had to choose a major, but they don't really know what they're going to do after they finish the major, you know, they're just really confused. And like many people are, what would you say to that person who's, you know, stumbles upon something like this, and they're on the fence, they're like, should I jump into digital marketing? Should I take uh, Seth's coaching program? Or, you know, what, what, what should I do? What would you say to that person? If you found this video, you're, you're obviously looking for something, um, some direction. And I feel like, you have to let go of all of this is at least my experience. I had to let go of all of the societal pressures from family members, from other people around you, from other peers that are, you know, telling you this is exactly how you should live your life. And so you just have to let go of that and just open your mind a little bit more into 
into other paths for yourself and that it doesn't have to be a degree. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, I, I, I'm biased. I think that Seth's course was probably like one of the best decisions I've made. It's led me to a career that I feel fulfilled in and I have a good work-life balance. Like, I feel like you just, the reviews speak for themselves. Like he has plenty of success stories. I feel like me, if I can call myself successful, um, <laughs> still always learning, but yeah, I mean, just, just like, just, just buy it. It's <laughs> just do it. I mean, that's, I'm going to be biased. I'm not being paid to say this, I promise, but um oh yeah, yeah that, that's another thing we literally <laughs> never pay anybody to do these interviews that's because we get those comments sometimes like this is a paid yeah. actor like we have, there's been zero times we have ever paid a single person to do these interviews they do it because yeah. they feel like they got more value out of the course than they gave and so they're so happy to do these interviews right they're yeah, more than I'd, happy i'm not getting that's... paid to be here <laughs> yeah no it's it's um yeah it's like actually something that helped me out a lot in my not just my career my life like I live in a city that I enjoy I could pack up and I have a job that allows me to work remote I lived in Colorado for a little bit um yeah just just go ahead and, and try it out and if you if you want to ask questions like I'm on LinkedIn Seth's on LinkedIn um Shane's on LinkedIn mm -hmm. <laughs> you know like um, yeah, happy to help. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, sometimes people do reach out on, on LinkedIn. I've, I've noticed that people will, will find the, the students and reach out. Um, so yeah, yeah. So the, once in a while we do get like a conspiracy theorist comment down below and it's just like, yeah, this is a paid actor, you know, and stuff like that. It's like, <laughs> No, no, guys, we, we, literally, no. <laughs> we literally do not pay anybody like it's we not not even a single time and nobody gets affiliate commissions either. Seth is uh, mm -hmm. he probably could do that and make more money, but it's just like an integrity thing because he doesn't want them to be biased uh, by mm -hmm. getting like affiliate commission for for that. kind of Yeah. Um, yeah. So awesome. Um, would you is there one tip you would give somebody um, that's like the the most important tip if they're trying to uh, land a job in digital marketing. Yeah. One yeah tip. In digital marketing. Yeah. Oh man. Just really lean into making it happen in terms of marketing majors are going to come out of their degree. And you are the one, if you choose to go through a course like that, or you can generate your own experience, no matter what, like you can just let your experience show through and share what you learned doing something on your own. And, you know, you can, you can really stand out amongst all of the applicants because you'll see a lot of applicants for jobs, but just like make generating your own experience, like the most important thing over your resume, over everything else, which is also important, but make sure that you actually, um, make that happen it's it's going to happen for you if you're able to communicate that you are the best candidate and that's going to happen through showing that you've made an experience for yourself got it awesome is there anything that i should have asked you that i didn't oh my gosh i don't know i don't i don't think so um i don't think so i didn't okay. that's a good question <laughs> 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 okay awesome so uh claire cool. thank you so much for coming on the channel really appreciate it i think a lot of people are going to resonate with your story for sure uh because that's so common with the college thing and just being confused about what you want to do so uh thanks for coming on i'm sure you're going to inspire a ton of people thank you so much thanks for having me